oh, there's definitely a shift in this. And I think we're, we're finally achieving critical mass. We're almost at the tipping point in my estimation. Um, and, but you know, this is for two different groups. For the lay public, the amount of awareness is just way up and accelerating. Um, and they pretty much are the drivers for this, uh, at least off-label use. Um, the reimbursed issue, the reimbursed list um, is another issue, and that addresses more the doctor and academic uh, doctor crowd. And that is a, has been a pathetically slow sell. And it's based on this misinformation, lack of information, the fact it's not taught in medical schools, and so on. And uh, the fact that doctors are finally with the help of increasing research, publicity, and so on through the public sector, uh, doctors are becoming more aware of it. But that is the big task, is reversing what my generation of doctors have been misinformed about. So if I go to my third year of medical school in 1978, I heard the word hyperbaric, or the word phrase hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, by a group of doctors as we were going down the hall and this group of doctors was rounding on some patients and I was with my junior resident. The junior resident is the main clinical teacher when the medical students are in the hospital and that's usually a, they're out of medical school, they do their first year training internship and then they do their residency. So it's usually the first, second year of residency. Those are the ones who do most of your teaching. And I heard hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and I waited till we were down the hall, and I, I said to him, uh, Strat, w w what is hyperbaric oxygen? And he said, don't ever ask about it again. It's been thoroughly disproven, unscientific, and been shown to be charlatanism, snake oil sales, and fraud. And that's what my generation of doctors learned about this, because it could not be explained. And so what usually happened was, you were given this list. And I experienced this in 1986 when we opened up a hyperbaric unit in the hospital emergency room where I was working. And I was offered the opportunity to go get training in this, and in particular diving medicine, which was the main thing that uh, we were doing. And um, uh, went and got the training and you saw all this science. And it's like, where's the disconnect? Then you're in the hospital and you give this list to the doctors. They go, oh yeah, oh so the, yeah, the hyperbaric, you got a hyperbaric service now, what does that do? You show them this list of diagnoses and they'd look at it and go, carbon monoxide poisoning, bone infection, thermal burns, exceptional blood loss, and you go down the list and, and you'd get this quizzical look on their face like, it, it makes no sense, connect the dots. And the doctors, hyperbaric field, could not explain to connect the dots. And as a result, doctors don't understand it, they don't refer for it. And that's where we've been for my entire medical career. But it's changing. <laughs>